Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, John Bown, on this Friday, the 13th of April, 2012. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. The ring of fire is beginning to bare its teeth. Are we prepared to face another Fukushima? Then, our Agenda 21 coverage continues. Darren McBreen reports from a citywide cover-up in Roswell, Georgia. Plus, we speak with Lloyd Chapman about the latest GSA scandal. And Joseph Plummer, author of Dishonest Money, joins us to discuss the private Federal Reserve. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. And let's get into the news. A story coming from a fellow we're going to interview here in a few moments, Mr. Lloyd Chapman. A story he submitted to the Huffington Post. GSA scandal is a window to the way Washington really works. And this, of course, has been going on forever. He says, as early as 2003, the GAO released an investigation finding that millions of dollars earmarked for small businesses were diverted to the largest companies in the world. Today, as you're reading this, millions of dollars that should, by law, be awarded to small businesses are being diverted to the largest companies in the world. And of course, this is carried by the most recent scandal the, uh, from the New York Times, lost in the GSA scandal, confusion about a small business contract. And according to a report issued last week by the GSA's Inspector General, the GSA awarded a $58,808 contract to a company called Royal Productions for audiovisual services. Government rules say that contracts in this dollar amount are reserved exclusively for small business concerns, the report said, but Royal Productions is not a small business for purposes of this type of contract. Moreover, it forwarded a price quote from a competitor to Royal, enabling it to present a winning bid. According to the Inspector General, this too is against the rules. And on we go as more money is spent on sushi and dinners and Palm Springs vacations for interns. They, in order to make this all make sense to the American people, if they happen to find out where all of our taxpayer money is going, they held awards for themselves, which they dubbed the Jackass Award, pretty fittingly. Officials at the General Service Administration invented fake awards as an excuse to hold taxpayer-funded dinner events at conferences, according to an interview transcript obtained by Roll Call. Describing the award ceremonies as a running joke, the employee said supervisors explained that the fake awards were designed to justify dinner events at the conferences. And with more on that, we go to Lloyd Chapman, who has worked to protect the interests of our nation's 27 million small businesses. In 2002, Mr. Chapman founded the American Small Business League, and that, of course, with a goal of stopping the diversion of federal small business contracts to large corporations. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Chapman. Thanks for having me. And, of course, we are going to start this interview with the Yet again, another story about GSA and uh, government bureaucracy mishandling funds. And if we go back to uh, April 10th, the uh, scandal began. And as you said earlier when we were chatting, that uh, it, if it had not been for the video, no one would have heard about this. And it'll probably last five minutes and people will go about their way and forget all about it. But we're talking about a scandal that cost us, well, in the millions. Uh, they used uh, war dinners to justify the money they were spending. They spent money on interns. Uh, they spent $136,000 on scouts to go and find the area to have the party. Uh, how typical is this? This goes on every day, all day long. This is just a little sample of how our government runs. And again, had it not been for those compelling videos, the guy doing the rap song and the, the uh, award shows, whatever, had it not been for that, you would have never heard about this. But for every story like this that you hear about, there's a hundred. 
that you never hear about. And quite frankly, that the volume of money that they squandered, um, it sounds like a lot, it's a lot, but there are agencies that are squandering a hundred times that much um, on, a, on a daily basis, but you don't, you don't hear about those stories because there's not that compelling you know, video. Also, you have to realize the federal government has a lot of power to squelch stories that they don't want to get out. And uh, if, if they don't want a story to get out, you know, they can just uh, do a lot of things to make sure that it, it doesn't get out. Sure, or or turn the turn the facts uh, into a light where they look like they are investigating it when in fact they're not at all. Uh, in relation to the amount of money spent, let's go to a major level. Uh, you were speaking earlier about the the story about the twelve billion dollars that was lost in Iraq that was brought over. Just as an example for folks, uh, tell us about that story and and explain how that uh, rolls downhill to the bureaucracy in America. Well, when they uh, started rebuilding uh, Iraq, a C-17 transport flew to Iraq with $12 billion in cash in $100 bills, shrink wrapped in $100,000, they call them bricks, about a foot square, $12 billion in cash. They lost $9 billion, lost it. Don't know what happened to it. There was a little Mickey Mouse congressional hearing and swept it under the rug. So when you think about, you know, the kind of money of the GSA scandal, think about $9 billion in cash disappears and there's a little brief hearing. In fact, um, I bet most people hadn't even heard that story. That's kind of funny. So if you're, if you're watching this right now, have you heard the story about the $9 billion in cash that disappeared? Google it and you can read about it. But uh, that's a story that uh, didn't get much attention, and um, that should have been on the front page of Time magazine. But so many news organizations depend upon these feeds from the federal government uh, for news that the government can can sort of, you know, um, threaten to cut off those news feeds uh, if they run stories that they don't like. But it's it's very common for the government to hire some of the biggest public relations firms in the world to help them control the stories that come out. In fact, the, G, uh, the GSA, I'll tell you about the GAO, uh, uh, did an investigation a few years ago and found they were spending something like a um, million dollars a day on public relations firms to control these stories. So the, the, the abuses in government are just rampant. The GSA story, those happen every single day and we just don't hear about them. Yeah, and the, the American mindset goes to sleep on it. Uh, we just had the report up on screen. I mean, what, there is no bigger headline than that. I mean, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you have a headline like that, heads were gonna roll, but now, uh, well, we, uh, we dispute uh, the report and yeah. uh, just going about your business, this won't be in the paper yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, that's uh, right. It sure was shocking, but uh, you know, here's, here's a fabricated story we can go to. Uh, you're also speaking about how uh, I asked you. I asked you how the uh, the amount of time it, you're speaking about the uh, the request for records. How the how the, the Act. yeah how how the common person can go about doing what you're doing, and uh, I asked you how long it took uh, to actually get some information. What was the longest time, and it was pretty surprising. Yeah, they're supposed to respond within 30 days, but if you ask for uh, damaging information, information that shows fraud like I do, you're looking at up to three years. And again, I've gone to the Supreme Court to get uh, the phone records for the SBA's press office director, Mike Stamler, and those are very simple records. They should be able to email that to you in 10 minutes. And I was at the Supreme Court. I spent, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars, but I can tell when I've uncovered something that's very damaging based upon how hard they fight to withhold it. And I think these phone records for the SBA press office director would show that the SBA was working with um, some of the biggest public relations firms in the world to kill these stories about the diversion of federal small business contracts to um, corporate giants around the world. In fact, we, we found information that the SBA had hired um, an international public relations firm that specializes in crisis management to try to kill these stories. I got the documents in my office. But uh, they should respond in 30 days, and people should make uh, use of this. You can type up a letter and just say, under the, under the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act, 
please provide the following information. And you can get anything that you want to. So people, more people should do that. Is there a cap on the amount of time that they have to get that information to you? They're supposed to give it to you in 30 days, but they can ask for an extension. But generally speaking, you should get this information within about 90 days. But I think if more people used it, it would increase transparency in government. And it's just real simple. Just get a piece of paper, type up a letter. And uh, again, the, the wording is, under the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act, please provide me with the following documents. By the way, you have to ask for documents. You can't ask them for information. It has to be documents. And just figure out what documents that you want, and uh, they've got to they've got to give it to you. Well, speaking of the GSA, uh, it's basically a uh, part of the administration that's behind the scenes, does a lot of the mundane, routine work, but they feel that they deserve uh, this kind of vacation spent by the taxpayers. The amount of money spent could have gone to all of these things throughout America that could have done us a lot of good, especially with the economy and the people being out of work and creating jobs and everything that Obama gets up on his pulpit and uh, professes about. And it's all, it's just obvious lies to all of us that are awake. Uh, and it's shameful. And is, is there any way, I mean, there are folks like you out there fighting day in, day out to change the system. Is there a larger scale way for us to, uh, to get things done uh, it, through the court systems, through the Supreme Court? Could we, could we completely overhaul an administration of this scale? We could if people would just uh, stand up and quit being afraid of the government. Um, here's what I'd like to suggest to everyone watching this. Get out your computer and Google Thomas Jefferson's quotes and read what Thomas Jefferson said. He, he is probably one of the principal founding fathers of this country. And he said, every generation needs a new revolution. He said, um, when the people fear the government, you have tyranny. And, and the, the, government the, the tree people, of liberty and, will be fed by the, by the blood of, of tyrants. That's right. Or something he said along the tree those of lines. liberty needs to be watered from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Yes. So yes. when you read what he says, he'd be arrested for treason today, I think. Sure. And if I, if I said those things, they'd be knocking on my door. But mm -hmm. read Thomas Jefferson's quotes. Mm -hmm. And people need to be quit being afraid of the government. And we need to do what Thomas Jefferson said to make them af afraid of us. Well, we yeah, people need, to, they need to stop being afraid of the government because pretty soon they're going to be really afraid of the government because that's what the government wants. They want you to be afraid. And, and it, day in, every day we come into work here, the stories get more and more intense about the government and the overreach that's going on throughout this country and around the world and the audacity of the overreach. And p people that are, are paying attention are, at this point, we're just waiting. It seems like next week things are going to really change. People need to wake up. But the the, the good thing is, is that we have here at InfoWars, we have it, uh, somewhere between 15 and 20 million listeners a week now, and it's growing. And then you have the mainstream media losing all kinds of viewers because people are hungry for the truth. You've got MSNBC uh, fabricating the uh, Zimmerman case in order to make a race war happen. You know, and, 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 and in my opinion, a race war is not going to happen. Ra racism, sure, it's, it's, it's uh, in small pockets of this country, but it's over, folks. You, you know, give up on the whole racism thing. That thing end, that, yeah. that ended 30, 40 years ago, but it shows you how disconnected the people in charge and with the money to spend on these elaborate parties and $8,500 in sushi that could have gone to some single mother are. They're, they're just completely disconnected living in their ivory towers. And uh, anyway, can you speak on that as far as the disconnection? Yeah, a couple of things. If you think about the GSA, this is the federal agency that's supposed to be uh, watching over our tax dollars and make sure they're spent properly. So when the GSA is squandering taxpayers' dollars and then ridiculing government inspector, uh, inspector generals who are supposed to watchdog them, just think of, of, of how they conduct themselves on a daily basis, right? Um, in regard to mainstream media, here's something I've learned the hard way. Um, I was being interviewed by a major television network, 
and uh, talking about the diversion of federal small business contracts to corporate giants. And I mentioned Lockheed and Boeing. Well, that story never aired because Lockheed and Boeing were two of the major advertisers on the television network. Sure. And what I've come to understand is you will not see um, television networks run negative stories about their advertisers. So you will not see stories about um, the oil companies and how they're making excessive profits and paying no federal income tax and how they're um, you know, robbing us at the pump and, and, and overcharging for gas and how they raise the price of gas in a way that's disproportionate to the price the, of crude the, oil. The companies themselves, the, that NBC, for instance, owned by GE, they're not even paying any taxes. I'll tell you a story about that. In 2003, uh, NBC came out to my office uh, from New York to California, spent a week doing a story about me. And it never ran because I talked about a bunch of companies that were guilty of federal contracting fraud and they were subcontractors to GE. So that story never ran. So I've had, I've had a number of stories actually not run because uh, uh, I mentioned companies that were affiliated with different news organizations or advertisers, but I'm sure everyone watching the show has seen that um, ad from the American Petroleum Institute, the lady in the black suit walking across the map talking about the resources in America. Uh, they spend billions advertising on, on network television. Think about it. What are they trying to sell? Why are they running those ads? Public no opinion. Ads. Yeah, brainwashing. That's propaganda for the oil yep. and gas industry. Sure. And they're trying to buy clout with the, with the uh, uh, news channels so they won't run these negative stories. But Well, these BP ads... Uh, you know, come to Louisiana, come to Florida. Everything's fine down here. Yeah. Is it? Is uh -huh. it? We're <laughs> Americans, okay? You can't pull the wool over our eyes. It's probably not okay down there, okay? Why don't yeah. you run an ad that says, well, this is how things really are. We're working on it. No, it's not It's not that ad at all. It's, it's Walt Disney World. Hey, everything's great. Yeah. You know? Come on down and eat a, a, some oysters filled with oil. Yeah. It'll be good for well, you. Unfortunately, these big corporations control the media. Uh, when you're watching national television, ask yourself this question. What percentage of national advertising comes from Fortune 500 corporations? I would, I, let me just guess. Do you, do you know the number? I, I think it's 90%. Yeah, I would yeah, have, have to be in the 90s. When you think yeah. about um, the big lobbying firms in Washington, you know, Preston Gates and Ellis and these big lobbying firms, what percentage of the money that they get comes from Fortune 500 corporations? Probably like 100%. Well, so the big corporations control the <clears throat> lobby in Washington, they control <clears throat> Congress, they control, you know, the White House, they control the news organizations. It's logical, think about it, right? What's the function of, of a, a television network? Its function is to make money by selling advertising. That's its function. You know, the function of a news organization isn't to inform the people, it's to sell advertising. Right. And so you're not going to do stories that show that your biggest advertisers guilty of federal contracting fraud are cheating the American people out of billions of dollars a day by overcharging for gas. So quite frankly, to me, mainstream media has almost become like propaganda for the Fortune 500 corporations. And unfortunately, the general public watches national television and they see those stories. They go, oh, that's what's happening because I saw it on television. No, that's not what's happening. That's what they want you to think is happening. But it just it's logical. Think about it. They're trying to sell advertising. The Fortune 500 firms are their customers. They're not going to run stories that show that their customers, you know, are violating federal law and cheating the public. So you can't get what's really happening off, off, off of the news. Well, we thank you for joining us, Mr. Chapman. I could talk to you all day, and uh, hopefully <laughs> you're going to be uh, on, our, our, on with Alex here pretty soon, maybe next week. But uh, this, this is just a complete ludicrous Travesty, travesty, and uh, but it's of course par for the course. And uh, thanks again for joining us, and uh, take care. Thank you. You guys are fantastic. All right, and so are you. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Lloyd. Ladies and gentlemen, Lloyd Chapman from the American Small Business League. And now moving on to important geothermal news, which you may or may not find anywhere else but here at Infowars. The Ring of Fire is roaring to life. And there will be earthquakes of historic importance. This American Dream article uh, goes through the history of uh, the uh, Ring of Fire. And lately, there have been a lot, there's been a lot of activity as far as uh, the Ring of Fire and its threat on not only earthquakes and volcanoes, but also uh, nuclear events. 
So we start out here with, does it seem to you like there has been an unusual amount of seismic activity around the world lately? Well, it isn't your imagination. The ring of fire is roaring to life, and that is really bad news for the West Coast of the United States. Approximately 90% of all earthquakes and approximately 75% of all volcanic eruptions occur along the ring of fire. It also goes on to say that on Wednesday, the most powerful strike slip earthquake ever recorded happened along the ring of fire as long as that happens outside of any uh, area where people are, are living, that's fine, but it, once it moves into California or moves into Japan or any, any place along the ring of fire, let's take a look at that graphic again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a massive shift in life on Earth. In 2001, there were 137 earthquakes of magnitude 6.0 or greater, and in 2011, there were 205. Again, 2001, 137, 2011, 205. And of course, what that means to our nuclear reactors that sit on the Ring of Fire, as you can see, we've got plenty there in the great Northwest and in California and along China, Japan, and of course, we've already had the Fukushima disaster. Maybe that's just an appetizer for the big meal awaiting us. Again, that article, the American Dream article, the ring of fire is roaring to life and there will be earthquakes of historic importance. Please check it out at Infowars.com. Moving on now to a Houston councilwoman who warns of UN agenda in city projects. Oh, the word is beginning to get out. Activists and some politicians see Agenda 21 as a UN-led conspiracy to impose worldwide control on people, in part by denying private property rights through the implementation of sustainable growth or green initiatives by local and state governments. Just what we've been talking about here for the past week. And of course, it also goes on to say, this is the United States of America. We don't answer to anyone but the good old U.S. of A. Get that through your thick U.N. skull. It doesn't say that in here, but I just said that. Brown said during discussions of the garages, by this vote, we're giving $26 million to a non-American initiative and interest. And speaking of the impending green initiative pressing down on us like a boot pressing down on our neck by authority, we now go to this piece or these pieces from Darren McBreen and Marcos Morales about the honest, hardworking chicken man who was just trying to do the right thing up there in Roswell, Georgia. We are standing in front of what used to be the home of Andrew Wordes, who died tragically on March 26th of this year following an explosion that took place right here at his home. And this was as county marshals actually attempted to evict him from his property. Now, this property was seized by green zoning laws by the city of Roswell. They claim the land is future conservation area, and they call it green space. And for those of you who are having a hard time believing that, as I did, you can actually go see for yourself on the roswellgov.com's own website. They call it the City of Roswell's 2030 Comprehensive Plan. We're going to show you some of the devastation caused by the explosion and the fire that followed. You can actually still smell the burnt wood from the fire. This is truly a shocking and tragic story. You know, this man had his property seized and was terrorized to death by the city of Roswell, Georgia. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. We're actually going to go to the city council right now and see if we can get them to answer some very serious questions. So Darren McBreen signing out. Well, a funny thing happened to us in front of City Hall in Roswell, Georgia today. We showed up here moments ago to enter City Hall, see if we can interview some of the people in uh, the city council, perhaps talk to the mayor. And we were immediately met by police officers who told us we were not allowed to enter City Hall. Also, they told us we weren't allowed to take any photographs and that we must have the proper credentials to photograph in the area. Um, you know, we had a little scene that went on for a while. Uh, Marcos and I kind of uh, 
schooled them on our uh, basic rights and that we're allowed to photograph. But interesting, this family over here moments later showed up and began taking pictures right there in front of City Hall. So apparently some people are allowed to, others, Info Warriors, are not. I'm Darren McBreen, InfoWars.com. Thank you, Darren McBreen, for that report. And of course, those guys will be back on Monday to file an extensive report on the Agenda 21 manipulation that is happening worldwide, but especially here in the United States as of late. Now moving on to water restrictions could soon be permanent, another Agenda 21-esque story. We don't have enough water for those people. In less than 20 years, you talk about a deficit in Washington. We have a deficit right here in North Texas, and it's water. So they're saying water restrictions could soon be permanent in Dallas. All the rain that's fallen in recent weeks has a lot of people looking forward to an easing of watering restri restrictions, but city leaders in several DFW cities want to make them permanent. And there they go again, controlling our lives, our very water, our very drinking water, that lovely fluoride water. Moving on to a article that I wanted to point out to folks just to get educated from uh, someone who's very experienced, uh, number two there at the Department of Treasury under Reagan, Mr. Paul Craig Roberts wrote a report called Washington Leads World Into Lawlessness. And if you have any questions about the Obama administration or our intentions in Iran or the fact that we are leading the rest of the world down a slippery slope, of complete criminal activity, well, he documents it all right here. Uh, for example, he says, Washington violates the human rights of its own citizens. Washington has suspended the civil liberties guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution and declared its intention to detain U.S. citizens indefinitely without due process of law. President Obama has announced that he, at his discretion, can murder U.S. citizens whom he regards as a threat to the U.S. And it's a very extensive read and a good report. I just wanted to point that out tonight on the news for folks who need to be educated or if you want to just go back and look over what's been happening here recently with our republic. Now, moving on to a very interesting story. Uh, since the booms that were taking place up in, in Wisconsin, we had hinted at the fact that we thought that it, there could be a possibility that these booms the source of these booms could be high-speed rail. Well, it was brought to our attention by uh, the Intel Hub that the LA to New York in a half an hour, 10,000 plus mile per hour tunnel train used for underground bases has been underway for a long time. It's been uh, under the agenda of the uh, Rand Corporation, who in 1972 in the LA Times, June 11, uh, 1972 LA Times said, a Rand Corporation physicist has devised a rapid transit system to get you from Los Angeles to New York in half an hour for a $50 fare. That's back when people were good and honest and were going to use things uh, for their own means. Uh, I'm talking about the elitist. He said, existing technology made such a system feasible and so does a cost analysis. The essence of the idea is to dig a tunnel more or less along the present routes of U.S. Highways 66 and 30, the tunnel would contain several large tubes for east-west travel of trains that float on magnetic fields. Moving at top speeds of 10,000 miles per hour, passengers would face forward during acceleration, backwards during deceleration. And all of that sounds very, very interesting and uh, sounds great. It sounds like... Uh, uh, the kind of technology that we need and we need to strive towards. But uh, looking at this uh, nuclear tunnel boring machine that Switzerland, uh, it, well, Switzerland has a lot of nuclear b tunnel boring machines, but we have the best. And in this report, uh, last Friday, the final breakthrough on the east tube of the Gothard base tunnel occurred, and they used a TBM, a tunnel boring machine, to do that. And if you look here at the Rand Corporation's report on the actual route system that would be used uh, as a result of these tunnel boring machines, it went from San Francisco, well, this, this was 
when this report came out, this was years ago, but uh, you could find it online. The Transplanetary Subway Systems of Burgeoning Capability by Robert M. Salter, February of 1978, courtesy of the Rand Corporation. Uh, the route went from San Francisco, as they said, along 30 and 66, all the way up to New York, up into uh, New England. But what may have happened is, well, seems to have happened, is the Defense Department and the government and the secret need I say shadow government has taken over this transit system and they use it for their own benefit. And moving on now to a daily quote, which will bring us right into our next guest, Joseph Plummer, who's written an excellent book called Dishonest Money, which you can find at Infowars.com in the store. This is from Woodrow Wilson. He says, I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is controlled by its system of credit. Our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. Woodrow Wilson, after signing the Federal Reserve into existence. And now we take that thought to our next break and our interview with Joseph Plummer, author of Dishonest Money, right after this. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube, and you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important. But we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report, and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you going to join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist 
that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the Info War. So you say you want to fight the Info War. You say you want to go head up against the New World Order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle. enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and uh, well we resist them via a free market system hello my fellow info warriors alex jones here introducing you to the pro pure family of gravity fed filters now you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes fluoride lead mercury arsenic and one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels these poisons are gravity-fed filters. And ProPure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic. On top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the Pro Pure Big Brush Finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the Pro Pure King Large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the Pro Pure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalists obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. And I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure Gravity Filter System. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water. Uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. Pro Pure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity fed water system in the world. Pro Pure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. Pro Pure is the name. And welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm John Bowne, your host tonight. We are going to speak with Joe Plummer, who has written a book called Dishonest Money, Financing the Road to Ruin. And uh, what Joe has done for us is what he's taking the monumental task of taking G. Ever Griffin's The Creature from Jekyll Island and, of course, a lot of other information 
and breaking it down for the common person to understand why we're in the situation we're in and the intricacies involved with the criminal activity uh, that was born of the Federal Reserve. And uh, of course, you can find this book at the InfoWars store. It again is Dishonest Money. And now we go to Joseph Plummer. And Joseph, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you, John. And I just want to start off with a quote here, uh, basically from your Obi Wan Kenobi. G. Edward Griffin says of Dishonest Money an excellent job of condensing a large and complicated topic. And that that's saying something there because G. Edward has written this epic book and each chapter in itself seems to be a book in itself. Uh, but you've, you've taken that and condensed it down for people so that it's easier to read, easier for them to understand and recognize within our system the uh, criminality that we're experiencing and have been experiencing for decades. Yeah, I was uh, pretty happy to get that recommendation because there really isn't anybody else I can think of who uh, I would rather have an endorsement from than Ed Griffin. Uh, when I started looking into the Federal Reserve System back in 2003, uh, everything I found was just needlessly convoluted and seemed intentionally vague. And uh, there was a bunch of different conflicting information. And just depending on who you were, you know, whose opinion you were taking, there were just all these different arguments. And it wasn't until a couple years of going through uh, the, the books written by economists, which is just nothing but economies. If, if you're familiar with legalese, lawyers, imagine economies. It's the same basic concept. Uh, I finally came across The Creature from Jekyll Island a couple years later in 2005. And I, it was just like, oh, my God, this is fantastic. This is great. Somebody actually took their time, tried to break it all down, presented only relevant information, pointed out the most important stuff. And uh, at that point, uh, I, I was really excited because I, I had a good understanding by then, but I didn't have anything that I could actually give to people. And I was really happy because I was like, okay, anybody can understand this. Well, the thing that I didn't uh, take into account is, yeah, anybody can understand it, but unfortunately, most people aren't too excited about reading a 600-page book. And so that was uh, really upsetting for me because the in information in the book is so important, uh, but I couldn't seem to convince very many people that they needed to read it. So essentially what I did is I took the, the same story uh, you know, it is the same story. There are numerous books on it. It's told a bunch of different ways. But I, I basically took the same story, the story of the Federal Reserve System, the story of the people who are using that system against us, using control of uh, the money supply to corrupt our institutions and, and every other horribly evil thing that they're doing, and uh, and put it in into a form that nobody would be intimidated by. And then throughout the book, I encourage people, because I think this was a big part of it. It's if somebody doesn't know anything about a particular topic, they're already a little bit apprehensive to approach it. If it's a topic that is notoriously difficult to understand, as is the monetary system, it's worse. And then if you add into that, it's a 600 page book. It just is another obstacle. So basically what I wanted to do is prove that the topic does not need to be intimidating, that it isn't that difficult to understand and condense it down into something that anybody wouldn't be intimidated by. This is a one-day one, one day book. You can read it in, in five hours if you were to sit down and read it. Yeah, um, and it, it seems uh, reading G. Edwards' book, and I have to be honest, I didn't get to the end. It's huge. I'm still reading it. But you do read it, and you come up with a conclusion that, well, the first conclusion is i got to get this out to people I know. How do we mm -hmm. not know this? How, how has this been kept secret all this time? And then you gradually start to think, well, this is what should be taught about American history. I think your book, if we win this thing, you know what I mean? Your book will be used in public schools and, you know, all over the world. Well, you know, I, I really, truly, simply wanted to write yeah. something that could reach all those other people. Like I said, I just wanted to, to give them something that they could easily open, they could easily understand, they wouldn't be intimidated by because it's so incredibly important for people to understand this. And then if they're looking for, you know, just the, the, the epitome of the story, as I recommend in my book, then go to Ed Griffin's. But at the, at the, you know, at the very least, gain this 
general understanding because if you have a general understanding of what they're doing it's going to make it a lot more difficult for them to continue what they're doing in fact eventually as people uh, gain awareness it's going to make it impossible for them to continue doing what they're doing sure and I, i'm sure there are a lot of people out there although our listeners are pretty savvy on this topic but there are a few people out there saying well uh come on guys what are you talking about you know what kind of secret information are you talking about well, here in America, we're talking about the meeting that took place on Jekyll Island in Georgia and was done by an elite group of bankers and uh, Senator Aldrich, uh, who, is, who was the father-in-law of, uh, of J.D. Rockefeller. Rockefeller, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then they, they used uh, code names in order uh, that the information didn't get out. And it, the story in itself of how the uh, income tax was created, how the Federal Reserve was created, is it would make an incredible movie, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, yeah, it's it's not all just dry data, and it's not all just economic facts and all this other stuff. It really is a, a story. It reads like a story because it is. It's a scandalous story of how they essentially transported the system that they had in England and were using in England to the United States via the, via the Rothschild dynasty. Rothschild, uh, Rockefeller, yeah, it, it's, Warburg, yeah. Once you get it down, it's pretty easy to understand. It begins, uh, it, it's kind of hard not to point a finger at the Rothschilds because they create such a, a, a looming dynasty with the takeover of the Bank of England and then, of course, spreading out amongst uh, the sons and the brothers amongst uh, Europe. And, of mm -hmm. course, they have to come and take that jewel of America and mm -hmm. uh, figure out it. But by then, <clears throat> their techniques of undermining uh, the banking system and the economy of, of a country has already uh, already been formed. Uh, so give folks an idea about how the banking system used to work before the Rothschild dynasty got a hold of it. That's what G. Edward explains also. But how, how it used to work, how it's supposed to work, an example of that, and then show how they make it work. Well... It was never perfect. We've never had really a 100% money system. And so that, that's a problem. They've always had fractional reserves. The thing is though, it used to actually have some backing and that backing was gold or silver. And so that limited the amount of money that they could create out of nothing. And then of course that limits the amount of uh, problems and consequences that stem from being able to create money out of nothing. Uh, they just, you know, what's interesting is a lot of people say, and I'm not here arguing that gold or silver are the only two possibilities. Some people are very, very adamant about that being the only possibility. What I'm saying is they are certainly better than the system that we have right now. There may be, you know, through technology, there may be different options that are available. I don't know. But to the people who are so against gold, they say, well, you know, they, they can manipulate gold, they can manipulate silver, they, they can, you know, hoard it or do all these other things. And it's true. And then with the fractional reserves, uh, the fractional reserve capability on top of that, it, it, it gives them the ability to, to still cause problems. But what they did by removing gold was gain complete control over all money. That is something they could have never achieved with gold or silver. Now they are the sole source of all money. And, and it seems, and money in itself seems like a static thing. And sure, people can sit there and go, well, that's the economy and that's the one that we're, we're working under. But in the words of John D. Rockefeller, competition is a sin. Mm -hmm. and, well, so, and so what, what they do is what happens with that economic system is it moves out into our reality, into our society, our culture, our civilization. And they're able to create a, a uh, atmosphere where competition is eliminated. Uh, independent banks that are, or independent small businesses that were creating savings are, were actually at some point able to go out and spend more money and create more jobs for the economy. This system is completely controlled, especially at this point in our history. And so- well you know. you know, if you want to control government, let's just break it down to the most basics. Or if you want to control anybody, uh, money is the thing that ultimately determines whether or not an institution or an organization is going to be able to do what it wants to do. Words on paper are not going to control government. Uh, camp campaign stump speeches aren't going to control government. Promises aren't going to control government or corporations. Promises aren't going to control people who are in the seat of power anywhere. 
essentially you have a couple basic options. One option is force and the other option is uh, money. So until we can actually control the amount of money that the federal government has access to, it's going to continue implementing the policies of those who control our regulatory system and our governmental system. And these are the elites that, uh, you know, even, even people who are apologists for globalism admit that these people have disproportionate influence. They use nice euphemisms. But essentially, these are the policymakers. These are the people who are determining policies. They're, they're determining our foreign policy. They're determining our domestic policy. They're determining economic policy and monetary policy. All of this stuff affects us. And it just so happens that it affects us in a negative way and all of the benefits accrue to them. So as long as they're, they remain in charge of this system for confiscating wealth and undoing the current system as it is, or you know, c continually eroding what was there and, and creating something that they can continue using to their advantage, we have problems. But if we're able to cut off that money, we gain the same, pr the, the same power that the people who are creating this money out of uh, thin air have had all of this time. If I could, I'm a big fan of using their own words against them. Mm -hmm. So this is a quote so that, I, that I, <laughs> yeah, I, this is a quote that I have in the book from the guy who created our current monetary system. This is from John Maynard Keynes. So I'm sure most of you've heard of Keynesianism. That's the system we're under right now. Here's the quote: By a continuing process of inflation, governments can confiscate secretly and unobserved an important part of the wealth of their citizens. There is no subtler, no surer means of overturning the existing basis of society than to debauch the currency. The process engages all the hidden forces of economic law on the side of destruction, and it does it in a manner which not one man in a million is able to diagnose. Now, that might have been true when Keynes wrote that in, I think, 1919 or, or 1920. Sure. It isn't true anymore, okay? Now, there, thanks to the, the numerous books, Dishonest Money, Financing the Road thanks to Thanks to the it's Internet, one, which Keynes had no idea was coming. Right. It is, it is very easy at this point for you to pick up a book on the topic, learn what they're doing, learn how it works against you, the enormous power. Another thing I like to say to people is I say, imagine if today I gave you the exclusive right to create out of thin air money. You have the exclusive right to create what everybody else either has to earn, borrow, or steal. How much power would you have? How much power would InfoWars have if, if today, I mean, to reach the masses with the truth, if InfoWars was given the exclusive right to create money out of thin air? What would your reach be? What would well, your, you, know, you know what we are able to create out of thin air? What's that? Knowledge. There you go. Which is a, well, lot, it's there. a lot stronger than money. <laughs> And it, it leads me to a thought that I have, especially when I read G. Edward Griffin in your book, is it's hard to imagine, but uh, I, I think about my grandparents and my great-grandparents in World War I and World War II and the Vietnam War, the wars we've endured for these people. For these people. Exactly. And, it and seems Mark, to erode national sovereignty. I mean, that is their, their unapologetic goal. And, and, and they had no knowledge of that. You know, it sounds almost un-American to, to say that, but it's very American to say it because we have to get America back. And if we got America back and we got these people out of power and in control of our currency, can you imagine what kind of world we could live in? Yeah. Well, that's what we're working on. That's what we feel compelled to do is to continually expose that, uh, you know, the current system's based on deception, theft, and violence. And when you eliminate their ability to deceive, you erode an enormous amount of their power. Because it, without the deception, then people are a whole lot less likely to accept the theft. And that only leaves them with the last option, which is violence. And you can't conceal violence. And you also need the, the theft to finance the violence. Sure. And you need the consent of the deceived to accept the violence. So. You know, I always I like to begin with that concept of destroying the deception as a base and then continually working towards, uh, 
you know, this has been going on forever. Forever. It's, yeah. it, it, there have been elites and there have been those who were mm -hmm. uh, exploited beneath them. Of course, nobody or a few people want to believe that they're living in a predatory system. We have to show them that they are just because it's not necessarily visible. The consequences are there and you just have to point out to them the cause of those consequences. Well, it's and very reassuring do. that there are people like you out there that are that are taking a stand and making a difference. And it's also reassuring that they're getting so desperate and sloppy. Uh, mm -hmm. re, it, with all the stories of their overreach, there's also a, a huge amount of sloppiness that, that happens day in, day out here uh, every time you look at the news. So uh, we want to thank you, Joe Plummer, for writing this book. And, of course, you can find Joe Plummer's Dishonest Money, Financing the Road to Ruin at Infowars.com and uh, go under store to find that. And, again, thank you, Joe, for joining us today. Good to be with you. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. If you want to join us here at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv, there's a 15-day free trial going on. If you're seeing this on YouTube, the easiest way to uh, come and check out what we're doing is by doing the 15-day free trial and decide for yourself if what we're doing is conspiracy theory, conspiracy fact, or actual true journalism. There's a 15-day free trial. Just go to prisonplanet.tv. And, of course, we're getting more and more submissions for the reporter contest. If you want to join us here at Infowars.com, actually join us right here at Infowars.com. We have the reporter contest going on. It's at Infowars.com forward slash reporter dash contest. And, of course, there's 5,000 per reporter prizes, 10,000 in total, 5,000 for a male and 5,000 for a female. And we've had a lot of good entries so far. We have until April 30th, 2012, and we've got the official rules up there and the official guidelines. Just follow those guidelines. They're fairly simple. And we welcome more additions to our staff here at Infowars.com. Well, that's going to do it for me, John Bound, tonight on this Friday, April 13th, Friday the 13th, 2012 edition of the Infowars Nightly News. Have a good night and keep on fighting.